Hello everyone. In this video we're going to go over structs. Uh, we're going to talk about the basic concept of what is a struct, how to create it, and then how to use it. This is going to start off uh, at the most basic level, so feel free if you already know a little bit about them to look down at the table of contents and skip to a different part of the video. So here I have just at the top, just you know, reminder, probably some of the first things you learned in C++ is variable types, right? You learned how to, how to declare an integer, how to declare a string, a character and then probably not too long after that you learned how to declare an array an array was cool because you could store multiple items in an array you could store a whole bunch of strings a whole bunch of integers or what have you what we're going to learn today is is essentially how to create your own variable type and the reason this is most useful is because we can create a variable of our own type that stores a lot of different things it can store integers it can uh, it can store characters and strings all under kind of in one group and the way this is most often used in object oriented programming is that you'll have something like I have here and let's just talk about the syntax first so to declare a struct this is all you need right here struct and then after that you want the name of your struct and then curly braces and then you always want to make sure that you have of course a semicolon here at the end and it's a little bit tricky because when you're actually declaring a struct after after a while, you're going to have a lot of items in inside your struct. And so th your syntax will look like something more like this. And remember, or, or again, this just helps me to remember to think about it, is that this is your own variable type, right? You're creating a variable type. This itself is not the variable. And so then when you actually go to create a variable, you'll have the syntax will look something like this. So I've created my variable type here, and so whenever I go to actually declare one, I'll need to use that as my variable type. So I'm creating a, a variable of type college course, and then you choose the name of your variable here. So that's kind of the basics, basic concept and idea. And the reason this, again, this is really useful is because it really allows us to store variables of different types in, in one group. So let's look at some more code over here. So here I've got a different struct uh, that I'm declaring, and this one I'm calling student. So I'm creating a variable of type student. And the reason, uh, the reason, the motivation behind this one is this is something that your university probably has for for you. So um, you know they got a bunch of students, and they need ways of storing all the data on the, on a given student. And so they might they might create or might use something like this. So inside of this student variable type. Uh, I want to store some information about each student. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, first name, uh, last name, date of birth, middle initial, they might decide to assign you some ID number, uh, and then what year you're in, and then maybe your social security number, or maybe they need that for student loans or what have you. So uh, this is one example, of course, of, of what kind of a struct you might need. Um, there's plenty of other others, so you might be storing uh, cars, and in each instance of the car struct might be a particular uh, kind of car with its own make and model and stuff like that. But anyways, I'll probably stick with this student theme uh, throughout this video. So down here, uh, student, we've declared a, a struct of the student type, and I've named it... Uh, JOTU1234 and this one I haven't I haven't set this equal to anything right I've, I haven't set any of these variables inside of this uh, struct of student type and so one way to do this and this is probably I'm gonna go ahead and show you this but this is probably the the least useful way uh, to do this but uh, here's one of the ways you can you can set these values with a struct and and you can do it when you're creating it so I've, I've declared this variable type, this struct type student, and uh, I've named it JOTU 5678. And then all you got to do is put an equal sign. And, and if it helps to remember this, it's a lot like how you would, how you would declare the struct in the first place. But uh, you just set it equal, curly braces. And then what you do here, this can be a little tricky, especially when you have a lot of variable types, is that all you have to do is start declaring your variables so the first thing this is expecting is it's expecting a string and it's going to call it first name and so all we have to do is tell it what we want that to equal and so it's a string so we put our our parentheses and then our string name here so essentially what this is doing it's the same as kind of saying string 
you know, first name equals and then that. Okay, so that's essentially what it's doing. And the constructor for this, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. But what the constructor is doing is it's saying, okay, well, the first thing I'm expecting is a string. And so as long as you pass it in a string, it's going to be happy. And then a comma separator, and then the next variable type it needs. And it's also a string. The third one, also a string. And then get down to the fourth one, it's expecting a character. And so we've got the single quotes and our character there. And then our fourth one, or I'm sorry, fifth one is uh, is expecting an integer. And so all we need to do is same thing, is just treat it as if we were declaring this integer and saying, okay, we'll int ID number equals and then give it what we want it to equal. So that's all we're doing here. And so it'll store each one of these variable types. And just to prove to you that this uh, this does indeed build and run, let's go ahead and do it and we can see it doesn't throw any errors. Now, probably the most important thing you can learn from this video is, is this right here, is the dot operator. So if you wanna access a member of this, uh, of this variable type, so here we had J-O-T-U 5678, so that's what I've got right here. So right, I'm printing it out. All you need is to put a dot and then the, the variable that you wanna access, so first name. Right, so that's the first first name that's stored right up here, and so we set that value equal to Jonathan. So we would expect that if we type in JOTU five six seven eight dot first name, that it's going to print out whatever we have saved there, which we expect to be Jonathan. And let's go ahead and try that. And sure enough, it works. Prints it out for us. So the dot operator is really what I want you to learn from this part of the video. And up here. Just as an example, you this is how you can access it, right? So that's all we're doing. So we've got the, the same the same uh, student struct that we've we declared earlier, and uh, we're using dot first name. So that just access accesses that variable, and then we're setting it equal to something else. So we're overriding Jonathan, and we're putting in Jason here. And if we build and run this, we see yeah, it works. It prints out Jason. So um, also you can you know just just for proof here, you can you can type in anything here uh, that's that's one of your variable names. So if you wanted SS number, for example, and we printed that out, we get what was stored at that that location. Uh, if we want uh, ID number, we can do that, and that's how you can access each one of these elements. And also important to note that you can access. Uh, we declared this variable up here, the student struct type, and we can we can also uh, we can also change, even though we declared those with, with no value, declared them null, we can still change them here. And it's not going to throw an error. And I'll just, I'll just go ahead and prove that to you and go ahead and change this here to first name. And uh, now we're doing JOTU1234. And if we build that, and we can see that it, it stored it to JSON. And remember that when we had originally initialized this, there was no value stored there. So if we try to run it, uh, it's just there's a null value, so it's going to print out um, nothing, and then our, our indel. So that's why it skips that line before it says finish there. So that's that's kind of the basic uses of structs. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move on to something a little bit more complicated.